time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. So busy, been so very busy. I can't even remember last time I played this game, though. It's probably just been a few days. But, <sighs> let's all do that together, because I'm sure you're busy, too. You have a life. You have things you're doing. You have, you have concerns. Um, everyone has concerns, right? So one of my concerns is that I'm running out of time to finish the 7x7 seven seven ages. As I may have mentioned, I'm moving soon. And so I have to deny her again. I have to deny Pegasus a spot in this game. It's just, I can't be adding on more things as we're getting near the end. I know it, it wouldn't technically change the number of turns we're playing since we would be doing a double elimination, but it does take me longer to play when I have more players. So, um... What I'm going to do, though, because I feel I owe it to her, I lost her once, and she should have been part of this group, and it was really my fault who lost her, right, in the physical sense. It was these hands and this mind, these hands that put her somewhere, and this mind that did not remember where these hands put them. Or maybe the hands didn't remember. There's a muscle memory, right? Um, so I'll just let her face the winner in something. That's that's super good for her. That's a much better position. But I feel like she deserves it because of my mistake. It's like it's like if I failed to um, de-ice the sidewalk in front of my house and someone slipped, they would deserve millions of dollars. And we've started what feels like is going to be a very important turn with two new empires that are going to change the tenor of the game, I think, at least in the short term, perhaps in the long term. Um, this is an important term for those of you who have forgotten, because we are very, very close to an elimination. If this marker gets here, or if any of these markers gets here, any marker gets here, there's going to be an elimination, which right now looks to be Melky. So this is kind of Melky's chance to try and save himself. Uh, did he have the best empire to start this turn? I don't know. But is it an interesting one? I do know. I think it is. He is starting with the Scots, and so there's been a... which makes this interesting little circle, fun little circle for me. The Scots have started here. Now, if you recall, oh, it, it just fits so beautifully in a, in a, in a strange way. Um, Melky, once upon a time, was the English, who were in here in England and all over the place, but he was using orange counters. Uh... During that time, Cowboy began the Scots in Scotland, attacked him, and failed. Okay, now the roles are reversed and the counters are reversed because Cowboy caused some civil war between the English, which his side won. So now he's running the English and Melky is running the Scots in Scotland. Hopefully he'll get another turn in order to attack with him because that could severely cripple Cowboy. Um, although Cowboy and Flush are very close here, I think... Flush had the better scoring, you know, he was scoring much higher. That might have been changed um, by the Japanese. They got they got hurt quite a bit last time. Uh, I think so. I can't remember quite what happened. I feel like it was like disease or something wiped out a, a good chunk of the Japanese' scoring area, and they also lost a lot of money. Um, more problem for the Japanese is the Mongols have just shown up here. Giraffe's new empire. She's really wanting to be able to start scoring again. I don't know if the Mongols are really the best empire to do it with right now, mainly because there's no no um, stronger empires around, and they kind of get off on taking down uh, more more advanced empires. Japanese are actually our least advanced empire, other than the Plains Americans there, over here. So they're not the best one to go for, but still, there's some nice land here in China, and the Mongols got a lot of money to start with, so that was, that was tempting. They also get two maneuvers right off the bat that she can do right now. So if she can spread out, she can get some fast points, which is helpful for her because most of her stuff has been just chipping away at Africa. She actually had another empire she could have started that also went in Africa, so she would have had all her empires just working against the Pharaonic Egyptians. Um, but she decided to diversify a little bit and go with Mongolia. The Mongol campaign against the Japanese has been vicious. They, they have an ability when they take land from someone, it pushes them back in a space uh, of progress. So she took several lands, took, her, took them off of the Asian continent. Uh, now the Japanese are limited to the sea and Japan. Um, and so that brought them all the way back here, almost back to age one. 
that was a long time ago when we were in age one. Another thing uh, with the new die rolling thing I'm doing, it's fights are so much more vicious. Uh, culturally, the Japanese have just been demolished. The Mon Mongols have taken a lot, but overall, even combined, they've 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 all lost lost out culturally speaking. Um, I've done something different in terms of how many dice it takes to get rid of a unit. I'm I'm each die is worth three in age. So like to get rid of this thing, which is from age eleven, it would take four dice. Um, I think. I need to do something similar probably with the culture cards because they're just way too easy to steal now. And the Mong Mongols definitely benefited from that. They were able to take quite a lot from the Japanese. Uh, maybe I should do four times age as well. Every four dice is worth something because you get a lot more dice with this new mechanism. Like here in this last battle, uh, Flush, he just had um, a pikeman and he still got four victory dice out of it. Uh, partially because you know, they they were a defensive thing, kind of fun thing happened with his two leaders here. They kept having to run away from from all the problems. Uh, they were in a lot of different fights, and they kept escaping because um, giraffes Mongols didn't have a lot of these shield things, which is what makes it so that you can capture leaders and things like that. So, pretty vicious attack by Giraffe. Um, got a lot of land. I don't think she has enough to score in the Northeast Asia yet. She has, she's one. Is that just land? No, it's land and water. So right now, Japanese have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that's all. Honshu's one land. Um, and the Mongols have one, two, three, four, five. Is this the line? It's always kind of hard. Five. So they're three away. So she's going to have to take to the water if she wants to be able to achieve that dominance or hope that the Japan, you know, she's beating the Japanese up enough that uh, Flesh is just going to get want to get rid of them. Which is definitely a, a twist in my mind because I thought uh, the Japanese were kind of, like if he was going to possibly make it away from the make it out of the elimination that was coming up that the Japanese might be his like his star his shooting star to the top but uh, I don't even know if he's going to make it out of the elimination I think he probably will though though I was pretty sure he wasn't going to before so I'm 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 a, ba I'm a bad predictor and I'm afraid it has happened uh, the Portuguese flushes empire has just traded with the Phoenicians bringing them up to the horse and buggy uh, square and so that passes the cutoff zone someone's going to be eliminated this turn I, I'm not going to kid I'm not going to be coy it's likely Milky he is currently oh, let's see one two three four five six six points behind Cowboy Cowboy I think is still scoring better than Milky even after this turn there's not a lot it looks like he can do. I don't. He doesn't have anything in his hand. He does have a destiny come up. I don't. There might be a card that does something. I really don't know. Um, yeah, he's not even doing a civilized action this turn because he had to maneuver with the Ottomans and he didn't have any cards. Yeah, it's going to be really tough. I think we're going to have to say goodbye to Milky. That's sad. I want to take a break from all the Milky. Um, drama, milky cowboy, flesh drama, talk about the dynamic that's going on between giraffe and runt. Um, it's a maneuver phase. Runt just took a pass, actually, on maneuvering with the papal stage. Didn't make a lot of sense to her to be attacking milky. Um, one, if he survives over someone else, then that's not bad for her. Then she can, she has her forces ready to fight back. Um, two, you know, if she spreads out with the papal states, then she's competing with the Germans, which is not good for her. She was kind of using them to get rid of the Romans. She did that. She doesn't quite want to get rid of the Papal States yet. She likes them. Um, she's, and she's, you know, she's got a little space to toy. So let's talk about what's going on with her and uh, Giraffe. She did maneuver with the Pharaonic Egyptians because she has to or else she loses three points. Um, but she really, she didn't take any land. She just kind of maneuvered her guys around defensively. Um, Giraffe, on, for her part, she's kind of been attacking with um, the Sudanese and just keeping her um, Zimbabweans just in this one space in Zimbabwe and just trading um, with the Pharaonic Egyptians and just trying to get at her that way. Um, so that's a pretty fun, fun thing that they're doing. The reason why she's using the Zimbabweans to trade so much is because she gets two points every time she wins 
Plus, she's having a hard time taking taking out the Phronic Egyptians just through, um, just through uh, military action. So she figures if she can get some trade dominance, she can gradually sap away at their culture in that way. The Plains Americans are no more. Uh, Flush is in the middle of his civilized action for the Japanese. Um, Japanese are greatly diminished in terms of their cultural strength because of that whole thing in the beginning in my experimental rules. Um, how I've changed it, I don't think they would have lost so much. But he was able to do something because the Plains Americans, he wanted to do something to Cowboy, basically. I mean, he's Flush, he's riding off, Flush is out of here. He wanted to get to hurt Cowboy if, if possible. English are actually Cowboy's kind of strongest empire right now. They're going to be a big score, I think, this round. Um, I mean, you can't touch the Phoenicians. The Phoenicians still have a ton of cultural strength. Plains Americans have none, though. So he was able to cause an uprising among all their people, which disordered a bunch of things. Part of that was a lucky card draw. He drew the Italians, which was six. Um, basically, you subtract this from that and double it, and you can put that much disorder. Then he had another card, uh, Rebellion, which allowed him to wipe out every disordered area that the Plains Americans had, which happened to be all their areas, so they are now gone. Milk actually scored more than Cowboy this turn. His Ottomans pulled out a lot of points, and his Phoenicians actually zeroed out. They got one for, for being the most progressed, but they're losing points for not having their their homeland. It was the English that got Cowboy a bunch of points. Before I scored Cowboy, it was kind of exciting, actually, because Melky's marker did pass his, but then I scored, it was like here and here, then I scored, um, scored Cowboy, and he just went around over to here. Uh, the, the counters all flipped over again. Runt has lapped people again and again. Uh, unfortunately, Melky is going to have to go. Giraffe only scored three this turn. Well, she actually scored five. She scored two for winning a trade with the Zimbabweans, but each of her, her uh, empires has only scored one uh, for having their homeland. Runt's scoring like 16 now. Um, Papal states, because there's not a lot of Christian empires, are scoring on, on having the most Christian spaces. One good reason to, to keep them. Germans, second place in, no, no, third place in Europe. That gave them some points. And then she's scoring like four points on being ahead on this track here. And then also the Franc Egyptians. Flesh's Japanese are still doing all right. He might want to hold on to them, even though they are they got knocked off the continent. Um, they still have the most water spaces. They still score on wheat. They have a wheat space, so that's good. And they still have some advantages. They're way far back there, though, and I don't know what he can do about these Mongols. Um, anyway, it's time for us to say goodbye. His occupation is a psychologist. His nickname is Melky. His secret fantasy is to bike with Greg Lemont, run with Madonna, and swim with the dolphin. An unusual fact about Melky is he's the smallest person he knows. His pet peeve is people who drive with headphones on. He probably doesn't like this this recent crop of drivers while texters, distracted drivers. He'd like to meet Daniel Boone. His personal motto is, I never give up. He's most proud of finishing the Ironman triathlon. His reputation in high school is Mr. Straight. Three words that describe Melky are goal-directed, self-competent, confident, and competitive. Just judging from his face and the few facts I know about him, Melky is one of those people who belongs to probably a different subculture and has a different way of looking at the world, who I might uh, get along with more easily, who a lot of people might get along with more easily than others who are um, others, I guess is one way to put it. Um, he's been great to play with, uh, as, as um, Natural 20 Games said. It was, it was always a joy to look on Melky's face, and I'm, I'm going to miss uh, seeing him as part of this. I'm going to look forward to uh, seeing him again in Outdoor Survival. I think he might do well in that, given his Ironman triathlon uh, background and the fact that he wants to meet Daniel Boone, who's kind of a woodsman. Um, Melky seemed like he had it. So many times, so many times in this game. He was our first leader in uh, Seven by Seven Ages, and then he fell behind to the runt machine. Uh, got caught up in, in some squabbles, got caught up in some experimentation. I think 
he maybe his confidence got the best of him. He spent too much time with those assassins, uh, not enough time with some winning empires. He had some some impressive empires, like even the Ottomans here at the end were impressive. They were, you know, they had a good reach. They uh, dominated Asia and second place in Europe. So they, they were the dominant force in, in two continents. But again, they not scoring, you know, same thing with those early Finns. Early Finns were mighty. They had, they had that black counter set, but maybe by having to hold on to that black counter set, he didn't, um, he took too long to discard them and bring someone else that's going to score more points. Overall, though, good game. Good game, Milky. You got got about halfway through, and, and we have to respect that. We have to. Goodbye.